Haas will finish in third place. The Dutch fans go wild. We go wild. The Mercedes deadlock is broken. And it is broken with a barnstorm finish at the Austrian Grand Prix. After eight races of Mercedes dominance, we finally have a new winner and a new constructor winner. Red Bull are the winners of the My World Austrian Grand Prix and Max Verstappen stands on top of the podium for the first time in 2019. Welcome to the Grand Review Podcast for the Austrian Grand Prix. So we move away from the French Grand Prix at the Castellet and come to Austria, to the Stimian Mountains for the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg, Austria. Round nine of the season. And after this weekend as well, which has been dominated by Mercedes all season long, we will go to the British Grand Prix at Silverstone for round 10 of the season. Then it's off to Germany and Hungary before the season that goes on the summer holidays returns in the end of August for the Belgium Grand Prix and the last stop on the European calendar in Ferrari Land, Italy, before the flyaways begin in Singapore, Russia and Japan, before the Americas trip to Mexico, United States and Brazil. And then we all round out on December the 1st to say Merry Christmas and goodbye to F1 2019 with the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. In the Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton leads the way on 187 points. He is rocketing ahead compared to Valtteri Bottas in second on 151. Vettel, Verstappen and Leclerc still battling out for third and place overall. Gasly sixth as well. He's dropped back into the midfield battle with the McLarens and Alphas and Renaults. Haas are having a dreadful weekend as well. Roman Grosjean only on two points. Kevin Magnussen on 14. But the drivers with no points at all coming into this half of the season is Giovinazzi, Russell and Kibitza. And that once again means that for Williams, they have scored no points so far in 2019. They are all at the bottom on no points. Haas are in a battle with Toro Rosso and Alfa Romeo, as well as Racing Point. Racing Point and Alfa on 19 points, Toro Rosso 17 and Haas on 16. The battle for the best Renault power engine is currently being fought between McLaren and Renault. Eight points the gap there for fourth in the constructors. Great to see McLaren back up there again as best of the rest. Although that could go to Red Bull because they're on 137 points of the constructors. Ferrari on the road as well on 198 because rocketing ahead with eight wins out of eight races for Mercedes, 338 points for the British German team of Mercedes. It is dominance in Formula One. All that will change as we arrive here in Spielberg Austria. Hello everybody and welcome to the Grand View podcast for the Austrian Grand Prix. I'm Joshua Birch. No one alongside me this weekend. They are both very busy. Megan is off uh, revising for her end of year's test, but don't worry, she'll be with us at the British Grand Prix. And uh, Dad is also doing some work uh, on paperwork as well, so uh, we'll leave him to it. But uh, they have both given me their driver reviews for the Austrian Grand Prix, but we'll get onto that a little later on as well. The Austrian Grand Prix then, a weekend which would see Mercedes fall from grace after their top honours in the first eight races of the season, it seemed that like Austria would be their downfall, but it didn't seem that way at the start of the weekend, as Lewis Hamilton was top in free practice one when the Formula 1 circus came to the Stadium Mountains on Friday for first practice. Here's the report. <coughs> Let's get into the first practice review then for the Austrian Grand Prix. And as always, uh, I'll take you through the report of what happened. And uh, first of all, the Austrian Grand Prix weekend action got underway uh, beneath a fierce sun. Track temperatures up in the 40s. Air temperatures at the highest, 37 degrees as well. It is phenomenally hot this weekend in Austria as well. Uh, as well, the start of the session, so 28 degrees, but that rose dramatically during the session, as we said. But it was top 
up for Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes, uh, who were bringing up the heat in FP1. He led the way ahead of Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel. Lewis Hamilton's time was a 104.838. Sebastian Vettel was second. Valtteri Bottas was third. Charles Leclerc fourth. And Max Verstappen in fifth place as well. So the usual top five we see in the first practice session. Uh, last year's party to Valtteri Bottas session began under a cloud and oil leak uh, forced a switch from his new spec powering unit to an elder engine. Uh, when he did get underway, though, the Mercedes man lapped quicker, quickly enough to get to third place. Uh, he was 0.161 off Hamilton and ahead of the second Ferrari Charles Leclerc, despite complaining of a bizarre brake feeling. Hmm, interesting. At the home track, Red Bull appeared to have the third fastest car for this weekend. Max Verstappen leading the way for the team in fifth place. Having won here in 2018, his teammate was a tenth off him in sixth place of Pierre Gasly, of course. And rumours that Gasly might not be lasting much longer at Red Bull, and it might go even back further. Uh, behind the top three teams, McLaren uh, backed up the eyebrow-raising pace that they had at the race at Paul Ricard. Great launch from them, fifth and sixth in qualifying find great weekend and they are still improving here in Austria as well uh, Carlos Sainz lapping 0.664 off of Hamilton in the opening session to claim 7th uh, 3 tenths ahead of Daniel Ricciardo in 8th um, Sainz was the only non-top 3 runner to get within a second of Hamilton although the Spaniard is set for a long Sunday given that he's standing for the back of the grid after taking new power unit elements as well. It was a trying end to the session for Ricardo though with the Renault uh, teammate Nico Hulkenberg sorry it's a, it was a trying end, uh, end of the session for Nico Hulkenberg I should say uh, with the German running off the track at turn 10 and having already run off at turn 9 at Rint coming into Lauda the last corner he got very wide and then when he came back on there's a little bit of a runoff area and then there's grass next to it and the grass just ripped the front wing end plate off so half the front wing on the left hand side was completely gone that was left in the middle of the track and with three minutes to go the red flag came out to end the session however the drivers were allowed back onto the track to do their practice starts uh, Hulkenberg wound down into P14 in the end. Uh, behind the two Toro Rosses are Danny Kvyat and Alexander Albon. Uh, like Sainz, the tie driver, Alexander Albon, will start from the back of the grid after becoming the last of the Honda runners to receive the Spec 3 power unit after everyone else got it over the last few races. Uh, it was an encouraging session for Haas as well. Kevin Magnussen going ninth. Grosjean, Grosjean, Grosjean was P11 after that DNF at Paul Ricard. Uh, they finished 4th and 5th last year, so how times change for Haas. At the back of the field came Williams, although the shorter Red Bull ring lap meant that George Russell in 19th at least managed to lap within 2 seconds of the front running pace and just a few hundredths off the pace of Lance Stroll, who was in 18th. And Robin Kubica rounds out in 20th. Let's take a look then at the full times from the first practice session here in Spielberg. <laughs> So Lewis Hamilton sets the fastest first practice session time on 104.838. Sebastian Vettel second on a 104.982. Valtteri Bottas is third on 104.999. Then it's followed by Charles Leclerc in fourth on a 105.141. Max Verstappen fifth on 105.260. Pierre Gasly is sixth on a 105.378. Carlos Sainz seventh on a 105.502. Daniel Ricciardo 8th on a 105.846, Kevin Magnussen 9th on a 105.876 and Lando Norris rounding out the top 10 on a 106.125. Romain Grosjean is 11th on a 106.135, Danny Kvyat 12th on a 106.272, that's followed by Alexander Albon in 13th on a 106.285, Nico Hulkenberg 14th on a 106.383, Sergio Perez, 15th on a 106.457. Antonio Giovinazzi, 16th on a 106.708. Kimi Raikkonen, 17th on a 106.729. Lance Stroll, 18th on a 106.756. George Russell, 19th on a 106.805. And on a 107.665, in 20th is Robert Kubica. <laughs> So it was Hamilton fastest from Vettel, Bottas, Leclerc and Verstappen in the top five. Gasly was still in P6. So again, the two Mercedes, the two Ferraris and the two Red Bulls exactly where you wanted them uh, for a great weekend. Especially Red Bull at the Red Bull ring, fifth and sixth in the opening session. But free practice two seemed a bit more representative as the teams got together once again for the usual race pace situation. But my God! 
was free practice too dramatic with some big names being caught out in the very dramatic free practice two from the Austrian Grand Prix. Let's move on to free practice two's report then and oh my god could you ask for more drama. It mainly because that question asked at the beginning, who's really fastest at the circuit, Mercedes or Ferrari? Well, that seems to be an answer in FP2, with Ferrari setting the pace, but not the Ferrari you would expect. It was Charles Leclerc who topped the second practice session. A 105.086, he chopped it by three tenths to Valtteri Bottas. Gasly was third, Hamilton fourth, and Sainz fifth, not even Vettel in the top five. And this is why. Because... Two red flags, three of the top three teams spinning off and creating drama wherever you look. Having been in a superb error-free form so far this year, the, uh, the 2018 Austrian Grand Prix victor of Verstappen lost the back of his Red Bull RB15 going through the final turn 10, which is called Lauda. He rotated the car and backed it in, knocked off the rear wheel and may have even damaged his gearbox. But luckily, we don't think it's a race gearbox, so we might just get away with that one. Uh, that brought out the red flag as well. Once the session was restarted, there was about 45 Five minutes remaining but two minutes into the session Valtteri Bottas went off knocked off both the front wheels of the car and he was coming into turn seven lost the rear of his Mercedes at turn six speeding through the gravel trap into the barriers at turn seven uh, the car heavily although both he and Verstappen thankfully walked away from their respective instance however but both the front wheels off his qualifying uh, run lost for both of Bottas and Verstappen so that is crucial and the race pace lost as well Wow, is that going to cost them a lot. The drama wasn't over, however, because Sebastian Vettel, when the session was restarted, lost the rear of his Ferrari coming again into Turn 10, just like with Verstappen, but was able to keep it away from the gra from the, uh, the wall at the end of the gravel trap and just backed it into the gravel and able to get out as well. Uh, so not big damage for the car. Uh, the net effect of the above shunt, uh, fest of FP2, uh, it's inconclusive because we don't know who's top, who's where. So FP3 tomorrow is going to be the session we need to watch as well. Leclerc's leading time was therefore slower than Hamilton managed in FP1. Uh, Bottas still managed to end up P2, but was three tenths off the pace of Gasly. Gasly's up there, not Verstappen, so what's happening there? Vettel had a disadvantage run because he was in the gravel trap. So it's all topsy-turvy. But the one thing we do know is that it was fifth and impressive once again from the McLarens of Carlos Sainz as well, although the new the Spaniard, he'll start the race at the back of the grid with an apparent element as I said earlier on in the programme, uh, did have a wayward moment off track at turn six. At the end of the session, Grosjean and Kimi Raikkonen sixth and seventh ahead of Vettel P8, another terrible session for him because of that mistake. Uh, that also uh, hinted at some decent pace in the house and Alfa Romeo cars. For Schappen and the second McLaren Landon, Landon Norris round out the top ten. The pitch of the field, very much mistaken because the accidents can't be taken as this is now going to be the pace. FP3, definitely the session to watch, but let's just see the full times from the second practice session. <laughs> So it's Charles Leclerc who sets the fastest second practice time on 105.086. Valtteri Bottas crashed out in dramatic fashion. Is second on a 105.417, completing just 12 laps. Pierre Gasly finished third on 105.487. Lewis Hamilton fourth on a 105.529. Carlos Sainz is fifth on a 105.545. Romain Grosjean sixth on 105.701. Kimi Raikkonen is 7th on 105.728. Sebastian Vettel, with that spin down in turn 10, was only 8th fastest on 105.871. Max Verstappen is 9th on a 105.879. And Lando Norris once again rounds out the top 10 on 105.952. Kevin Magnussen is 11th on a 105.960. Sergio Perez is 12th on a 105.964. Alexander Albon is 13th on 106.064. Then that's then followed by Antonio Giovinazzi on a 106.119. In 14th, 15th for Danny Kvyat on 106.148. Nico Hulkenberg 16th on 106.249. Daniel Ricciardo 17th on 106.418. Lance Stroll, 18th at 106.829, George Russell, 19th at 107.217, and 20th for Robert Kibitzer on a 108.508. The field separated by 3.422 seconds, going to Saturday's Free Practice 3. 
Bottas crashing out, Verstappen having a crash out as well. And when was the last time we saw Sebastian Vettel drop it, but keep it out of the barriers? It was a very entertaining uh, second practice session on Friday. There was a lot to talk about and it gave us a lot of interesting action coming into the, uh, the weekend and especially for third practice as well. Leclerc topping free practice too. We all thought, okay, that's a one-off. We didn't see the times for Bottas. We didn't see the times from Verstappen and not really representative enough for the times of Sebastian Vettel. But boy, were we wrong because when Saturday dawned in the mountains, it was Charles Leclerc once again on top. Here's the full practice three report. So it was Charles Leclerc who was top in the third practice session then. He appeared to confirm that it was a game on between Ferrari and Mercedes after his impressive pace in free practice number two yesterday. Leclerc, who won from pole here in both GP3 and Formula 2 uh, in pretty, during his junior career, uh, became the only driver of the weekend so far to lap the Red Bull ring in under 60 Four seconds. His time was a 1 minute 3.987. So that's 63 seconds around the circuit. Everyone's been predicting, are we going to see the first sub below 60 second lap in Formula 1 history? Well, it's a bit there or thereabouts, isn't it? We'll have to see what qualifying brings later. He finished uh, a tenth and a half uh, quicker than Lewis Hamilton, while Valtteri Bottas, whose car had to be rebuilt overnight following his heavy crash in free practice two, uh, was in third place. He was two and a half tenths off the Monagas driver. Spasti Vettel couldn't get within two and a half tenths of his teammate as he would have been ended up fourth overall. Another uh, ahead of another FP2 crash in Max Verstappen leading for Red Bulls. The top five was Charles Leclerc, 103.987. Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas, Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen in the top five. Uh, McLaren confirmed there was some decent pace in the LMCL 34 uh, this weekend. Gaz, uh, uh, Lando Norris. Finishing ahead of the second Red Bull of Pierre Gasly, their home circuit, of course, the Red Bull ring, formerly the A1 ring, formerly the Osterreich ring. Uh, but remember, anyway, that's uh, he's due to start at the back of the grid is Carlos Sainz due to the penalties from the power unit and, a ge and gearbox and everything else. Uh, moving on, Antonio Giovinazzi impressed to Pigo P9 for Alfa Romeo ahead of the two Toro Rosso's Danny Cavia and Alexander Albon, who, to who uh, topped the he was inside the top 10 for the first time this weekend. Nico Hulkenberg, P12 for Renault, although he's set to have five places as well wherever he is on the grid. I'll take a new Spec B Renault internal compression engine. Has confirmed at the end of the session they will be changing the gearbox of uh, the Kevin Magnussen ahead of qualifying, so that's going to drop him some places as well. Uh, he ended up down in P18 ahead of the two Williams, which George Russell and Robert Kubica as well. <laughs> So Charles Leclerc tops the third practice session on 103.987. Lewis Hamilton second on 104.130. Valtteri Bottas is third on 104.221. Sebastian Vettel fourth on a 104.250. Followed by Max Verstappen fifth on a 104.446. Adam Norris is sixth on a 104.986. The first time he's been higher than 10 all weekend. Seventh for Peter Gasly on 105.152. Carlos Sainz is eighth on a 105.219. Antonio Giovinazzi 9th on 105.336 and Danny Kvyat rounds out the top 10 on 105.391. Alexander Albon is 11th on 105.481. Nika Hulkenberg is 12th on 105.514. Identical time also goes to Kimi Raikkonen who's in 13th. 14th for Sergio Perez on 105.523. Romain Grosjean is 15th on a 105.620. On a 105.650 is Lance Troll in 16th, Danny Ricardo 17th on 105.878, Kevin Magnussen 18th on a 106.017, George Russell 18th on 106.676, and Robbie Kibitzer in 20th on 107.484. So Ferrari proving once again that they have genuine pace here in Austria. Mercedes are not as quick as we expected them to be uh, compared to the norm of what we've seen. So would it turn in Ferrari's way? Even Red Bull were making a track for pole position. But 
it's short track racing here. It's quite like NASCAR when you have short track racing. Here in Austria, it takes only 63 seconds to complete a lap. It is impressive the amount of speed that this place gets. It is one of my favorite races of the year. And that's saying it was one of the most dramatic qualifyings of the year as well. The Austrian Grand Prix qualifying report. <laughs> Let's start then with the qualifying report and start as ever with qualifying number one then here for the Austrian Grand Prix. Verstappen headed Q1. Stroll was eliminated for the 13th time in a row. The sun beating down on the Red Bull ring. Temperatures up at 28 degrees. The cars headed out for Q1. Ferrari raised eyebrows when McLaren Vettel led the session early doors. Uh, settling some rapid lap times as well despite being on the medium compound tyre. They finished P4 and 5. As well, it was Verstappen, Hamilton and Bottas, the top three as well. Russell and Kibitza once again were the slowest qualifiers as expected, but it was an interesting one. Knocked out in qualifying one was Perez, Stroll, Kvyat, Russell and Kibitza. Into qualifying two now, and it was the hard times for Renault as both Hulkenberg and Ricardo were eliminated from the session. The tyre strategy was at the forefront of everyone's minds as the second segment of qualifying got underway. The question... Is it Q2 on the medium tyres or Q2 on the soft tyres? Where was the track going to be? That was the big question. Ferrari uh, quickly didn't bother, though, and they put on with the soft compound tyres. Whether or not they can start the race or last the race on softs is yet to be seen. More pressing for the midfield runners, though, at least. It would be making through to the final second of qualifying. Two drivers uh, wouldn't, uh, the runners of Hulkenberg and Ricardo said 12th and 14th overall as well. Hulkenberg's grid penalty, though, uh, for the Spec P energy, puts him five places down. Uh, Landon Norris and the two Alphas got through as well, as well as Kevin Magnussen as well, but he's got a five-place grid penalty. Eliminated were Grosjean, Hulkenberg, Albon, Ricardo, and Sainz from Q2. And on to qualifying three then here at the Austrian Grand Prix. Leclerc takes his second pole position in Formula 1 history ahead of mechanical issues for Sebastian Vettel. The lights are in green for the final segment of qualifying and all nine cars headed down the track with the one very notable exception of the red Ferrari number five of Sebastian Vettel. Uh, he has got what was um, later revealed an air pressure line to the engine was terminal so he doesn't start uh, in a very good position. He starts 10th. But it was a great one for Charles Leclerc he took pole position as well Lewis Hamilton receives a three place grid penalty from impeding Kimi Raikkonen in qualifying one as well and lots of drivers with that as well uh, Pierre Gasly uh, will start higher up than he has this year it's an interesting grid and an interesting qualifying it's Verstappen second Leclerc on pole so Leclerc, Verstappen, Bottas and Hamilton Lando Norris in fifth let's take a look at the full grid then for the Austrian Grand Prix <laughs> Let's take a look at how they line up on the grid then for the Austrian Grand Prix. Row one, Charles Leclerc on pole position for the second ever time. He's alongside Max Verstappen, the youngest ever front row in F1 history. Row two, the two Mercedes, Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton. Row three, Lando Norris and Kimi Raikkonen. Row four, Antonio Giovinazzi and Pierre Gasly. And row five, Sebastian Vettel and Kevin Magnussen. Row six sees Romain Grosjean and Danny Ricciardo. Row seven, Sergio Perez, Lance Stroll. Row eight, Nico Hulkenberg, Danny Kvyat. Row nine, Robbie Kibitz and George Russell. And row ten, Alexander Albon and Carlos Sainz. Car 55, 23 uh, and also 23 uh, are going to start from the back of the grid for a new power unit. That's Carlos Sainz and Alexander Albon. They're at the back. Nico Hulkenberg, a five-place grid penalty for a replacement engine. Car 20 of Kevin Magnussen, a five-place grid penalty for a replacement gearbox. Car 63, George Russell, a three-place grid penalty for impeding another driver. And car 44, Lewis Hamilton, a three-place grid penalty, once again, for impeding another driver. And just before that, the grid was changed again with pit stops required. George Russell will start from the pit lane as well. Uh, so that shuffled the entire grid around. Lewis Hamilton started fourth, not fifth in the end on the grid, with Kevin Magnussen having a penalty, dropping him down into 10th place. A very confusing start to the Austrian Grand Prix, having three official sets of grids before the final one was announced just 45 minutes before the start of the race. And everyone was going to the grid at that point. So very, very dramatic for the Austrian Grand Prix with loads of drivers getting penalties and mixing up the order. Personally, in my opinion, I don't see why 
the people who have to start from the back of the grid should even be allowed to take part in qualifying. They've got a penalty, they have to start at the back of the grid, they already had their grid decided if anyone else got it because it goes on who goes out in FP1. So if you leave the garage and get out on the track first in free practice one and then the second person who's got a penalty starting at the back of the grid leaves, he starts behind you on the grid. So that's the system. Why are they allowed out on the grid in qualifying to qualify for the grid in Europe? It messes up everything. In my opinion, the people who we know for sure starts from the back of the grid should not be allowed to take part in qualifying. So the full grid saw Leclerc on pole position with Max Verstappen alongside the youngest ever front row lockout starter in history. It is going to be an impressive race and it certainly was. Megan wasn't with us for this one. As I said, she's revising for the end of year tests. But uh, alongside me in commentary was uh, our usual pit lane reporter and our co-commentator who seems to be doing more than Megan this year. Uh, it was my father, Ian Birch. So your commentators of the Austrian Grand Prix were Joshua Birch and Ian Birch. The Austrian Grand Prix, race nine, lap one. The cars are lining up at the back. The hills are alive with the sound of V6 turbocharged engines. The five red lights will come on. The youngest front row in the Formula One history. Five on. Action in Austria. Terrible start from Verstappen. Great start by Hamilton and Bottas. Leclerc leads up to turn one. And Verstappen's having to battle. You can land on Norris. A tremendous start. Lewis is already ahead. Lando's going to go for it, though. They're going to go side by side down towards turn four. Oh, Sotchler's gold. They've got to be careful. Hamilton's squeezing him. Lando backs out. He tries to go on the inside, but Lewis gets ahead. Right could have now round the outside of Lando Norris as well. The two Red Bulls lock up of Gasly and Verstappen. And those off in the travel. Grab a trap as well. One of the Renaults. And the Haas cars making up as well. Ricardo going for a battle. Leclerc leads from the two Mercedes. Bottas Hamilton, then it's Raikkonen, then it's Norris, and Vettel up to sixth as well. Lap four. Yeah, it's a, it was a, if you look at the two Red Bulls, it was a great start uh, for Gasly and, and, and Vettel in the Ferrari, but the um, Verstappen dropped so many places. And, and Lewis only just got out of the way, mm. and he lost he lost momentum by having to go round him, which uh, gave Bottas the, ta the the easy task of getting into second place. And Sebastian Vettel launches it out the inside of Lando Norris. Lando saying, "Not today, thank you very much." He's got the DRS. He pulls to the outside, coming down to Sochler's gold, and he's the McLaren going to get ahead. The Ferrari breaks later. Lando backs out. Oh, it's 1998 all over again. But this time the Ferrari. He's ahead of the McLaren. Replay. Race start. Now, look at the poor start from Verstappen. Hamilton, as you said, Dad, had to go right round the outside. That gave Lando Norris the advantage. And over to you. Yeah, if you looked also that um, Vettel um, took advantage of, of them all looking at what was going on with Dingy instead of concentrating on their own game. And he went up the left-hand side and uh, took two or three places. There he goes. Look, round the outside there. And he's going to have the... Yep. You're absolutely right. Took those places away from the Verstappen. He had a terrible launch. That launch signal not working again. Look, there, right, we're watching Vettel now, as you point out. There he goes. Up the inside. Thank you very much. Passing Gasly. Passing the Pauls Verstappen. And you're absolutely right, Dad. Great start from Sebastian Vettel as well. Great start from Lando Norris as well. Lap seven. I think he needs the more power at the moment. He's got a run on Lando Norris. Sends it up the inside at turn three. And Norris again is going to fight back. He hasn't got the DRS open. Now he had no, no, no DRS uh, at the moment for Lando. But uh, if Verstappen's got engine problems, he's locked up again. Look, Verstappen coming into Sochler's goal. So Lando's going to be right there with him. Lap nine. That's up for fifth now between Verstappen and Raikkonen coming up to turn number two. Verstappen has the inside line. He's making it look easy today as he breezes past. And the Dutch fans absolutely love that. Unfortunately, Raikkonen can't pass the Dutch on the left-hand side, but he's definitely trying to. Lap 14. So as we see Lando Norris at the inside, and he's got through. Lando at the inside of Kimi Raikkonen making the move for P6. And now look at Pierre Gasly. He's right behind the alpha of Raikkonen. He's going to try and make the move into Sotchler's gold, but he's backed out of it. Replay. Oh, this is the out of position on the grid for Magnussen, look. Also, he rolled forward before the lights
Lance came on. Look, he's beyond the yellow line of the sensor. So it yeah. registers as a jump start. Lap 22. The Mercedes popped yeah. up. It's Bottas. It's Bottas in. And, oh, a Ferrari dummying. Or are they going to bring in Vettel? They're bringing Vettel in. Vettel's down the pit lane. So hard tyres go on. But they had to hold him. They had to hold Bottas so Vettel could get in. That's why it's a 3.5 The tyres aren't ready. The tyres aren't ready. Dan and Ferrari. And that was a super slow stop. Yeah, disaster there, wasn't it? I think they reacted too late um, and, and and so didn't have the tyres ready. It's a typical Ferrari muck-up again. Lap 23. And he's Leclerc right. now. Le yeah, I think uh, they thought Hamilton would come in, then they would pit Leclerc, and so they had the wrong tyres. And they're a scrub set of hard. So do you remember when we saw the French Grand Prix? Uh, Leclerc put a, a scrub set on so he doesn't have to heat them up. So Yeah, yeah. He, he seems to prefer that, doesn't he? Yeah, so he's, he's, I think, I'm just checking. He's done one lap on those tyres. So once again, it's the lap he's done to the grid. So there's the tyres he's done to the grid. This is it, look. So comes into the pit lane, does Vettel. All four wheels off. And there's, look, there's no wheels left. Oh, I thought we had some when the race started, he says. We're the hell of the wheels puts them on and it's a very slow stop 6.3 seconds it was the front and the rear left oh look at that anger at ferrari he punched he punched the mercedes gate he punched the mercedes gate he was that angry uh yeah so hamilton now the leader of the race and with the fastest lap lap 28 has he damaged the wing oh, can't, lewis hamilton has he damaged the wing i can't see anything over to you dad i can't see anything either they are preparing but there is one wing ready ready Check my wing, I, think. I think he's hit it on one of these curbs <laughs> Uh, they're looking. They're looking, they say, on the radio. I think he might have done that because well, he's running wide at turn one, uh, isn't he, at, at the top of the hill. So, yeah. Lap 31. Lewis Hamilton, the race leader, pits to change the front wing. So, three, four, five. 2.3 second stop, remember? So let's see what the overall time is, and we'll deduct the 2.3. Hamilton away, 11 seconds. So, eight, you were around about right there, Dad. So Verstappen, Extra five seconds. Verstappen leads the way from Leclerc, Bottas, there's Vettel, Hamilton will come out in fifth place. Lap 50. And look at how close Verstappen's getting now to the back of Vettel, they really are going to push for this one. Vettel, I thought he was spinning it into turn one, that's a, that's a nice angle. He's got the run on him though, Dad, he's got the run on him. And you know what happens, every time Vettel gets put under pressure like this... He spins? He, he makes a mistake. Is he going to make a mistake here, though? Because he's put Vett, he's put Verstappen right up in. This time he's round the outside. This time he's got through into third place. But he breaks late. Come back to Verstappen. Did he make the corner? Yes, he did. Verstappen up to third place. And it's now three manufacturers in the top three. And it's not a Mercedes leading. It's Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull. One, two, three. Lap 56. Fail three. Fail zero three was the command there, so this isn't going very well at all, is it, for Red Bull? Although he's visibly closing on Valtteri Bottas, so maybe they've fixed the error. Look, can you, can you see him? Look, he's, he's doing the dials. He's, 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 he's doing a different map in. And he's throwing it off the inside of Bottas, so whatever problem it was, seems to have gone as Valtteri, that's Max Verstappen, taking second place away from Bottas in turn three. So whatever problem it was, it seems to be fixed because he was fiddling with the dials and he's got it back. So that failure must have gone. Lap 68. Down towards turn two and three. It'll be uphill now. Is this where we're going to see it? Look at the time. Verstappen's gone. He's going to have to pull to the inside. He breaks late. They're side by side. And he's going to have to force Leclerc wide. And he's going to be side by side. They run on the rubble strip. They run on the grass. Leclerc's got the punt. But Verstappen's got the DRS. He pulls to the outside. Coming into Sotler's gold. Leclerc has the advantage. And Verstappen backs out of it. But wow. They were side by side for so long. And after an races mercedes have been dominating they haven't been bulletproof here today we've got the red bull versus ferrari wow there's clearly nothing wrong with verstappen's engine that new mode that it was probably just a little bit of oil leaked out onto the exhaust 
There's clearly nothing wrong with that. This is exciting. Lap 69. Here we go again. Round three. Down to the inside. Verstappen lunges it. Leclerc knows he's there. The wheel to wheel. They touch. Leclerc bounces off the track. And they're side by side. Verstappen leads. And the Dutch fans go wild. But he's going to have to let him back through, surely, as he was forcing another driver off the track. What do you make of that, Dad? Well, I can see that Verstappen now has to get a five-second lead. <laughs> He might get a five-second penalty. And with three laps to go, oh, let's not have that again. A race decided. That was close wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. They banged wheels. That was exciting. That was a proper fight. And if it's spoiled by a penalty, then I'm quitting Formula One because that was exciting. Look, he left in the room. It was Leclerc who decided to hold it round the outside. That should not be a penalty. Lap seven. If you look, um, he can't be forcing a driving off, in, in my view, because he's he, Leclerc's wheels is, is the in, on board. Oh, that's, Leclerc's wheels no, no, that's, are clearly, are clearly, right, clearly facing towards Max when he's passing. So how can he be forcing Vettel, him? Vettel, it's Vettel. He's deliberately done it. Vettel ran the outside of Hamilton. They were side by side. Vettel nearly ran into the back of Hamilton at the top of the hill. Hamilton locks up though and that's Vettel out to fourth Hamilton down to fifth the championship leader has had a shocking race here today lap 71 we've had eight races in 2019 which has just been absolutely dominated by Mercedes we come to Austria at round nine at the Red Bull ring and it's Max Verstappen who wins in Austria Red Bull have to back victories at their home circuit. Charles Leclerc is second, and Valtteri Bottas will finish in third place. The Dutch fans go wild. We go wild. The Mercedes deadlock is broken, and it is broken with a barnstorm finish at the Austrian Grand Prix. The championship leader comes home in fifth place. Mercedes knocked off the top step. Post race. The first time in 12 races since the last time Red Bull won at the Mexican Grand Prix. It's Max Verstappen who is victorious and we see it is under investigation by the stewards. What do you make of that one then, Dad? Um, I just, we've already said, if you look at it, right, look, his wheels are the the facing, yeah. the seven, right, yeah. he should have backed out, he'd lost the corner, he should have backed out, he knew if he kept in, that the things, he didn't deliberately try and force him off, it, it's if a any, tight corner. If anything, it was the sleepy policeman that made Leclerc go off track and jump. Wasn't, yeah. It wasn't the wheel contact. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Max will lose this. Next race, the British Grand Prix. So Max Verstappen was the winner on the road of the Austrian Grand Prix. However, would he be the winner overall? Well, it was three hours before the official announcement was given by the stewards. A team of no further action. It was deemed a racing incident between him and Charles Leclerc. So Max Verstappen is the official winner with Charles Leclerc second and Valtteri Bottas in third place. A very interesting weekend, no doubt. Let's get the driver ratings then. And even though she wasn't supposed to be in this podcast, she gave me a knock five minutes ago during the race highlights and said, don't worry, I can do that. And, uh, well, here she is. Megan Birch now joins us to give us the driver ratings for the Austrian Grand Prix. So Megan Birch joins me now. And uh, surprise, surprise, you weren't supposed to be doing this podcast. But uh, you've kindly joined me and you've kindly taken a few minutes off from doing your end of year tests. Uh, how are they going, I must add? Fine. Excellent. Right, let's give the driver ratings then for the Austrian, Gr for the Austrian Grand Prix. I thought I said Austria. I did say Austria. Uh, you know what I meant. I thought I said Austrian like Australian, but it's the Austrian Grand Prix. So here's the driver rating then. Max Verstappen is the winner after three hours of waiting for the official verdict as to whether or not he did force Charles Leclerc off the track as deemed as a, a racing incident. An impressive drive for him, stalled on the grid, went into anti-stall, dropped down to seventh, fought his way back up and winner of the Grand Prix. What's your rating for Verstappen winning at the Red Bull ring? Five. 
Charles Leclerc finishing in second, the highest Ferrari, and again, he's, he, his best ever result in Formula 1 as well. Some cracking drives to him, he's certainly one for the future. Nice. Moving on as well, Vatu Bottas finished in third place uh, for the team. Uh, he's, he's having some good luck, but uh, he's the highest Mercedes driver of the weekend, not even Lewis Hamilton. First time that's happened. So, your, your rating for Bottas? Five. So, I'm seeing a lot of fives here. Sebastian Vettel, fourth fastest as well. Some good, strong racing today from him. But uh, again, that mistake in free practice two put him off in the race pace strategy and he has gifted it to Claire. So you're rating for Vettel. Five because of strong racing. Lewis Hamilton, a dismal weekend. Top to free practice one, but was fifth overall in the race. Not a great qualifying either. And he was the only driver, uh, the last of the drivers, not to be allowed your rating. Five because he tried. Uh, Lando Norris finished in sixth place for McLaren, one lap down, but best of uh, Pierre Gasly. So, uh, good result for Lando Norris, and he had a great start as well, up to third place, battle with Hamilton for most of the race. Your rating for Lando Norris? Four. Pierre Gasly finished P7 as well, and considering that his teammate won the race, Gasly as well not having a great weekend. We think it's something to do with the car, but your rating for Pierre? Four. Moving further on as well, Carlos Sainz finished in 8th place for McLaren as well. Double point score for the team, your rating? Four. Uh, ninth for Kimi Raikkonen as well, another lap down, but uh, an alpha double points as well with Giovinazzi in 10th. Your rating for Raikkonen first? Four. And Giovinazzi in 10th? Four. Sergio Perez for racing point was in 11th place as well. Not a bad race, he's highest of the season so far, your rating? Next up come the two William, the two Renaults. Sorry, uh, Danny Ricardo in twelfth place. Your rating? Um, two because he didn't try that hard. And Nico Hulkenberg is next up as well in thirteenth place. Your rating? Two because they did the same. Yep, exactly the same point. Uh, after that we get Lance Stroll in fourteenth place as well. But uh, he's still trying with that with that car. Your rating? Three. Alexander Albon is in 15th place for Toro Rosso. Uh, a difficult weekend for Toro Rosso as well with Kvyat in 17th. But uh, your rating for Albon? Um, my rating for Albon is a 3. Next up, we get Roman Grosjean and the Haas. A bad, bad weekend for Haas as well. They had a lot of problems struggling throughout the weekend with penalties and launch controls and wing damages as well. Your rating? 2. Moving on as well, Danny Kvyat in 17th place. George Russell, 18th for Williams. Expected to be kept on next year as well. Your rating? Three. That was three, by the way, in case you didn't hear. Um, Kevin Magnussen, 19th. Jump start of the grid, being out of position. 10 second penalty really ruined his race. Otherwise, it was a great weekend for Kevin, but a bad weekend for us in general. Three. And Robert Kipitzer was three laps down in 20th place and mysteriously won driver of the day after a glitch was found in the system. So he's not driver of the day. Sebastian Vettel was driver of the day, but your rating anyway for Robert Kipitzer. Three. Thank you, Megan. You'll be next up with us at the British Grand Prix. Any predictions for the British Grand Prix? Drama. Rain. Excellent. Thank you. We'll see you at the British Grand Prix. Back to me in the studio. So, drama at Austria. What a race it was. It provided the much-needed spark to get Formula 1 ready for the British Grand Prix. It's now time. On the 12th, 13th and 14th of July, we are going home. It is the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, and it could well be the last one, unless Silverstone and FOM agree a deal. We'll hope that that happens soon as well. It is a great spectacle for racing the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Last year's race was an airbiter. Are we going to get an airbiter this year as well? Well, coming off from this one, Red Bull uh, seem to be back. They look strong. Ferrari finally seem to be strong. Mercedes, well, they've had an off weekend. Can they bounce back in the British Grand Prix? Only time will tell. Yeah, my thanks to Megan, my thanks to Dad as well for commentary on the day, and we will be back at the British Grand Prix. But stay tuned as well, because on the Thursday morning of the British Grand Prix, that is the 11th, we will be airing two, yes, two Formula One games. Uh, the F2 career mode and the first race at the Australian Grand Prix career mode season one. So we will be airing that. And then we'll have the Thursday preview for, it for you on the 11th, followed by the Saturday practice review on the 12th, Sunday race preview on the, on the 14th as well. And we will all be going racing for the Grand Prix on Sunday the 14th.
Join us for the British Grand Prix at Silverstone in two weeks' time. But from here, Mercedes are no longer top dogs. Red Bull out of the charge at the Red Bull Ring. Goodbye for now.